Today I'm going to show you guys how to recover information from the shadows of your images. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find Flurn on Twitter at Flurn. Surprise, surprise. And uh, today we're going to show you something really cool. Oftentimes you'll go out, you'll take a really great image and you'll have a lot of detail in those shadows, but it can be a little bit tough to kind of pull that detail up with a lot of control. So I'm going to show you guys how to get some of that detail back as well as color your image and do some really cool things so you can like get a little bit more out of the image and just kind of like bring it to life a little bit. All right, today we're starting with Chris's image. This is a really, really cool image and uh, it's taken near Fort Wayne, Indiana. Just gorgeous. I wish I was there. It makes me want to be right here and soak up the sun and the train. It's just, it's a really, really good shot. Congratulations, Chris. Um, looking at the shot, I think, you know, I like what you're going for here with the contrast, but I would like to see a little bit more information in our shadows. So that's basically what we're going to do. If there's a really quick and easy way you can do this. With, in Photoshop, I'm just going to hit Command J on our background layer. Now, to get that detail in our shadows back, I'm going to go to Image. All right, <laughs> never mind. I do this all the time. Um, we're going to go to Image Adjustments and down here to Shadows slash Highlights. Yeah, I do this every day. There we go. And here in our sl Shadows slash Highlights, what we're going to get is basically this dialog box. Now, there's going to be uh, an option here for Show More Options. We'll just hit, hit Yes. Now, usually I keep the highlights um, where they are, but the shadows is really the shadows are really where you can get a lot of information out of your image. Let's just kind of bring that in there. So you can start playing around with things like your tonal width. You can start bringing the amount of information up in your shadows. And really this is totally up to you as far as like what kind of information you want to be pulling out of your image. Uh, you can almost get like a HDR effect as well going through this exact dialogue. All right, that's looking pretty good. Um, you can also change things like your color correction. You can add more color correction, add more saturation or take less saturation out, as well as play with your mid-tone contrast. So this is a really great tool to just kind of like pull some of that information, especially out of your dark levels, and just give you a little bit something more dynamic. Let's pull our saturation down just a little bit, and there we go. Cool, let's hit OK, and let's look at the before and the after. So you can see it pretty much leaves the highlights alone. This is our before and or after. It's leaving the highlights alone. It's just kind of pulling up that information in the shadows and giving you some of the color as well. You can do this what you will. Um, I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit because it doesn't need to be that bright. And um, yeah, just a little bit more. Okay. As long as we've got that color in there, that's what I care about. Now, when we're in here, we can go ahead and start working with our color. I'd like to see maybe a little bit more warmth come into this image. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer and we can do that pretty easily. Um, you can also have this affect just your highlights or your shadows. So let's have this affect my highlights. I'm going to bring up my RGB just a little bit. I'm going to grab my red channel and bring that up a little bit. And then we're going to grab the blue channel and bring that down a little bit. So we can see we're kind of warming this image up just a bit. Now with that warming, you can also just have it affect the highlights or the shadows. So I'm going to click on our layer mask here. I'm going to go to image and down to apply image. There we go. Now, with this apply image set, you have a couple options here. This is really what you want. Um, you want your layer to be merged, RGB, multiply, and 100%. Now, you have the option to hit invert, which is going to have this affect your shadows only, or if you don't invert it, it's going to affect your highlights. So let's go ahead and hit OK and see what this does. There we go. It just kind of warms everything up. And if I hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask here, you can see this is what the actual layer mask of this curves adjustment layer looks like. It's just a snapshot of what you can see put onto the layer mask. So nothing super special, just keeps it not visible where the, where the shadows are. Now, if you want to go in here and change, just double click right here on your curves adjustment layer. And you can do things like change, you know, give it a little bit more red, or you can pull down the blues to give it that like nice yellow. Let's give it a little bit of green too, because it's, it's looking awfully yellow right there. All right, or magenta. There we go. Let's pull down our yellows just a little bit. There we go. So you can kind of change the like mood and the color of the image as a whole while you're working just like this. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to grab another curves adjustment layer and let's play around. Maybe putting a little bit of reds there in our shadows. All right. And let's just pull our blue channel down a little bit. I just kind of like, I, I'm really into really warm images. I, I don't know why. Um, maybe this season, it's getting freezing in Chicago and it's just absolutely miserable outside. And maybe I just 
I just really want this for sanity purposes. Um, <laughs> there we go. That looks really good. But I don't necessarily want it visible on the entire image. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit Command I on that layer mask, and basically it's just going to invert that layer mask, making it all black. So we're gonna grab our gradient tool, G for the gradient tool. I'm gonna choose up here, you can have a linear gradient, radial gradient, and some other um, just weird gradients that I never use. And uh, we're gonna grab our radial gradient here. And then I wanna choose my foreground to color, or foreground to transparent. So that's the second one in here. There we go. So we've got a foreground to transparent gradient. It's gonna be radial. And now I wanna hit D for my default colors. So that's gonna bring white to my foreground color. Now with this, I'm just gonna click here in the middle, kinda of drag out just like that. And that's gonna give us that nice color just there. Let me just hit undo and I'm gonna drag out a little bit farther. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now, it's not gonna be exactly right. It just doesn't look that good just yet. So I'm gonna take my blue channel. We'll pull that up just a little bit. It was just a little bit too, there we go. It was just a little bit too yellow. It just didn't look real. All right, there we go. And that looks pretty good there. Cool, so kind of turning that off and on, we're able to see the image as a whole. Let's see what we've got here. I think that we put a little bit too much, I say we like you had any part of this. Um, I put a little bit too much red in this to begin with. Um, yeah, we did it together. Uh, <laughs> you probably were able to look at that and say, you put too much red in there. Okay, but that's what's really nice about using these adjustments layers is you can kind of go back and choose at any point in time that you want to adjust those. So if you do see maybe there's a little bit too much red or too much yellow, you can go back and pull those. All right, on top of that, let's grab another curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring this from the top right down here. We're gonna pull a gradient and uh, same as we, what we did before. So I'm gonna hit Command I to invert that gradient tool. And this time, instead of a radial, we're gonna use a linear gradient. I'm gonna hold shift and click, and like kind of just drag from the top down. So if holding down shift makes it only so you can go 45s, and 90s, just like that, so you can kind of see there. Um, well, that looks horrible, but uh, we're gonna go straight down from the top to the bottom, and then from the bottom up as well. Maybe just a little bit less there. All right, that looks really good. And let's kind of lower the opacity on that. Now, if you want to, you can add things like, you can change that from a normal layer to an overlay layer as well. That's gonna kind of bring in some of your color there. Um, what we are seeing, just because this is an image that we got off the internet and it's, uh, it was already compressed a little bit, we are seeing some artifacts. You can see like the colors and the banding and stuff like that. If you guys are using like a raw file or this is just coming out straight from Lightroom or straight into Photoshop from your raw file, you're not gonna see this stuff. This is all stuff that happens when you start really pushing an image. So especially if you are pushing colors quite a bit or your light levels, um, try editing in 16-bit and you won't see this stuff. I just didn't have the option because we're just using an image that's straight from, uh, straight from the internet here. All right, and the last thing I wanna do, just because I think it'll be kind of fun, um, let's give this train a little bit of a, uh, um, a headlamp here. So again, we're gonna go to a curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring this RGB value up there. We're gonna bring our red up a little bit and then our blue right down there. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my polygonal lasso tool. We're just gonna click right here in the train headlamp or whatever that is. I don't. For any train engineers out there, you can help tell me what that thing is. Um, basically, I'm just gonna make a shape right there with my polygonal lasso tool that kind of like outlines where the beam of light might be coming from. And I'm gonna hit Command I, Command D to deselect, and then hit Command I again. And that's basically gonna just show us what we've got there. All right, let's pull the blue channel down just a little bit more. Okay. Looks pretty good. Now, I do wanna give this a blur as well. So let's go ahead and give this a blur. And to do that, we'll just go to filter, blur, and over here to Gaussian blur. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna grab my regular old brush tool. We'll just choose like a really nice large black brush and kind of paint this away, farther away from the light source. Because we know the light gets stronger the closer it gets to the light source. Okay. Let's hit Command J on that, which is gonna, just gonna duplicate that layer. And I wanna fill that layer mask with black and then we're just going to paint white right around this headlamp here. There we go. Just something like that to give us a little bit more strength there. I just 
wanted to do that. It's just fun to turn lights on in Photoshop. Just It was already on. I'm just kind of making it look like it was you know, doing something a little bit more. All right, and that looks really good. Now here I'm just going to kind of play around with my adjustment layers real quick just to make sure everything is looking good and um, yeah, what we want. I'm going to here at the very end, let's just grab a curves adjustment layer. I do want to darken down just a little bit more. There we go. Bring back some of that contrast. So I'm going to hit command I on that layer mask. We're going to bring in, there we go, a marquee and invert that right over there. So we're going to bring in this bit of a vignette. We'll go to get in filter, blur, and then here to Gaussian blur. And let's just choose a really nice big blur on this because you don't necessarily want this to be visible. You just want it to look like it's a little bit more on the natural side. There we go. All right, and that looks really good. So let's just shift click and hit command G to group those all before. So we can look at our before and after. So here's our before and our after. You can see we've colored, we've colored it quite a bit as well as brought in some light sources. And uh, you can see there is a lot more detail there in the shadows, which really helps out. And if you don't like anything that you've done, just see about like changing some of these colors. Like this could maybe be brought down in opacity just a little bit. There we go. So we can work on our colors a little bit more. And that's the beauty of using adjustment layers is you can always decide what, even after you've created them, if you want them to be more or less visible or you can change the colors right in there. And that's it guys. So simple, so easy to do. All you have to do is grab a couple adjustment layers, play around with them, use affect your highlights and your shadows and you can get something like this, bringing that information back from your shadows. Thank you so much for watching Flirt. It's awesome. I know you have a lot busy lives and spending time with me is a good way to spend your time in my opinion. Thanks so much and I will flirt you later. Bye everyone. Hi guys, Kat from Flirt here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flearn.com. Also check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter, because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.